Hello everybody, Lisa here. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if this is your first time visiting me. I am going to be getting into my recent deck roundup today. If you don't know what that is, this is a monthly video I do where I share with you all the decks I've purchased that have been sent to me for review or that I've been gifted lately. We're going to talk about all of it. Occasionally some books show up in this category too, but today I think it's just decks. So let's get started. Before I jump into decks though, <laughs> I said let's get started. Let me lie to you. Okay, before we jump into decks, uh, a quick request. I've switched my filming setup. There was some comments recently that brought to my attention some quality issues with my videos, and while I do this for fun, I also want it to be an enjoyable visual experience for you. I think I have fixed the problem. If you can let me know if it looks good on your end, that would be great. I would appreciate any of your comments and feedback about that, and for those of you who feel self-conscious about pointing out if you notice a shift in the quality of my, of my videos visually or audio wise, please let me know. I'm still going to do my thing. I'm still going to have fun. But like I said, I may not always know when there's a shift that you guys can notice. And sometimes I'm playing with different setups. So please don't feel shy about letting me know if you notice a, a change. You all are really great about leaving those comments in a constructive and loving way. And I appreciate that so, so much. Um, but it, also I want to continue to make a good experience for you. So I appreciate the feedback. Thank you so, so much. Let's get into decks. So I have a not insignificant amount of decks in my bin today. I'm just going to put my bin beside me. There's no particular order to all of this. We're just going to jump on in. First off, uh, let's talk about the Heartwood Tarot. So this is actually a prototype that was sent to me by Stephanie Burrows. She is the creator of this deck. The deck is illustrated by Adam Ohlers. I did a complete video about this deck, which at the time you're seeing this video should already be up on my channel. So if you wanna see me literally gush about every single card, that is the place to go. I, now that I am showing it here, I'm going to probably take this out to my cozy spot in the living room a little bit later and round all the corners. Um, because this is such a freaking delightful deck. It is so cozy. It doesn't have um, a very distinct season for me right now, although the backs do bring in, I mean, all of, um, I guess I was going to say, let me not interrupt myself, the backs do bring in some autumn vibes, but to be honest, um, Oak Ash and Thorn feels a little autumny to me as well, and I think it's just the quality of the artwork, but this one, I don't know, there's something about it that feels like sort of like the height of summer. It doesn't feel wintry, but I could see it in a in a summer or fall kind of place. So I guess maybe I'm lying. Maybe it does have a season. But I don't really use my deck seasonally. I use them when I'm drawn to them. I suspect this is not going to be a deck that I pull out for clients and others so much as it's going to be a deck that I pull for myself because there's something so that it's got such a strong self-care sort of nurturing vibe. And it just makes me feel like I'm getting a hug. And I love that about this deck so much. Um I'm really excited about it. Right now I have, I believe, all of the lover's card and devil card options in here. There's two different lovers and two different devils. And the combo, the lover's devil combo, basically they are a combo. <laughs> there's two, there's one lover's devil combo and a different that kind of go together. And you'll understand when this deck comes out. But if you missed my full video, I will try to remember to link that in the description box down below for you. Some important information if you've been keeping an eye out for this deck. The pre-order for it is set to go live on Friday, May 3rd. If you want to stay up to date, make sure that you're on Stephanie Burrow's Three Trees Tarot email newsletter so that you get the notification. I don't believe she brings her pre-orders to Kickstarter. I think her first deck she did, but after that she's been just doing website pre-orders. So you want to make sure that you're staying in the loop by staying connected. And typically that's just a good little pro tip. Um, as a deck creator myself who is prepared to launch her first deck, I have to tell you the newsletter actually is a huge, huge, huge benefit to creators because it lets us make sure that the people who really want to know information about our decks are in the loop. Are in the loop. That's also very helpful because we may not always be in the same platform when we release our decks. We may not always be. It may not always be a Kickstarter. I don't know what the future of my future deck plans are going to be. My first one is Kickstarter, and then we're going to take it from there. But it's always best if you want to stay connected to a particular creator and their work to be on their newsletter if you can. And I know we like to keep our email spam like to a minimum. Most of the creators newsletters I'm on send very minimal amounts of newsletters. <laughs> like I myself try to send one about once a month, twice if I'm feeling particularly ambitious. So it's not a lot, um, but it is a great way to stay connected, especially if there's somebody's work you really want to follow. So just a tip. Anyways, um, 
I'm really excited about this deck. I can't wait for it to be in everybody's hands. I know it's a little bit of a struggle seeing it on YouTube and not being able to have it yourself, but it is coming soon and May 3rd is going to be here before you know it. And um, Stephanie always packs her deck so lovely. You're, it's just going to be such a wonderful experience. So don't, don't worry. It'll be here soon. I'm going to set this aside. I've still got to pick a bag for it. I actually have kind of a theme going with all of my Three Trees tarot bags. Uh, well, I should say the more woodsy ones. Um... So I'm trying to figure out a uh, like a bag that will fit this, the theme. So I'll I'll put my head together with Peggy's a little later and see if I can figure that out. But I'm very excited about the um, Heartwood Tarot. Okay, let's talk about a random one that showed up that I was not expecting. It came uh, from the publisher. This is called the Weird Sisters Tarot. Or no, excuse me, the Weird Sisters. It's just called the Weird Sisters. A deck of spells and rituals. Um, I have to admit, when I saw the cover, I was like, um... I'm not so sure. And then I saw the back and I don't know what it is about these images, but they all look the same to me. Um, we'll have to see when we look at the cards together, but it says weird sisters is a 60 card. Thank you for so many cards. Who is this? Oh yeah. Wiser books. Thank you. Wiser. Um, it's a 60 card Oracle deck devoted to working with the ancient deities who dwell at the roots of the world tree and set the order of the cosmos through their spinning, weaving and cutting of the cords. The threefold process affirms the cyclical nature of our being. From the creator of the Wanderer's Tarot, I don't know, if, do I not have that? Oh, I don't have that one. But I remember the art style, and it had this kind of line art thing going on. Um, this oracle will inspire and connect you with your personal magic. The accompanying my mini grimoire provides prompts for spells, sigil, and candle magic, and using magical tools and acts as a guide for you to divine your path, craft your own rituals, and honor your magic. So there's some really cool, um, I had it way up here. There's some really cool foil details on the box, which give it a little bling. That's always a fun, fun little treat. Nice, sturdy two-piece box. So it calls this a mini grimoire, companion grimoire and guidebook. So we'll dig into that. This reminds me of some of, it reminds me of some of the, for lack of a better way to say it, some of the cooler decks. I don't know. Like I think of decks like Holly Oddly. Um, I even like Reclaim and things like that. Sometimes this sort of style, this can go over very, very well with people. It gives it kind of a quirky feel. I'm looking at this thinking this is meant to be kind of a witchy spell deck kind of thing. That's kind of what I'm gathering from the box. So I'm going to grab my sort of competing decks so I can kind of keep that in mind while we go through this. So a lot of you will already know these are my two main magical working decks. Um, not counting the nameless one, which I also like to use that way, but is currently, it's currently in use this year in a different practice. But um, this little Making Magic mini deck, there is a full size. Uh, I haven't gotten it because I really like the format of this little one. Um, but this little deck has done so much magic with me and it's very, very simple. It's very inexpensive. And this just gives um, like a sigil and a little message for each sort of magical purpose. I've used it a ton. They're laminated, so I feel comfortable putting a little uh, candle, like one of those little spell candles in a candle holder right on top of the sigil. It's just been a very practical thing in my deck collection. It's gotten so, so much use. It's arguably one of the most used things I own. Um, so really, really love this. And this is for when I want to get in a little deeper. I've got a, this is the Witchlings deck and book set by Paulina Cassidy. This is so sweet and it's got great themes for different types of spell work. And the little book that comes with it is quite chunky and actually has little spells and ritual ideas, like kind of like very simple things that are easy to do, minimal ingredients. Um, so it's a great little sort of kit, like a little witchy kit. It's, it's wonderful. It's very, very well thought out, well done. And I love it. Um, so these are sort of my competing things. So with that in mind and the fact that I love these both so, so much, let's take a look at this one. So these are the backs. Again, we have a little bit of that sort of foiling, foil detailing. Now, I'm not sure if that's actual foil. I don't think it is actually. I think it's just sort of a bit of a a, a light silver colored ink that just happens to catch the light, but it's actually a neat effect. So that's cool. We have silver gilding and then we have our cards. So the card stock feels more flimsy than I'm, am I used to this from Wiser? Let me think. So we have the Woodland Wardens. Let me grab that and just see. I'm sorry for all the comparisons. I'm just in that kind of a mood today, I think. So Woodland Wardens is also by, oh no, this is Andrews McMeal, but that's what this reminds me of. Hold on. Let's see. Woodland Wardens. Is this, is this deck upside down? Hold on. Are some of my cards reversed in here? Oh no, it's not upside down. This one kind of has the same. Yeah, these feel very similar. I would say this feels a slightly, has more of a sheen. I don't know if that'll catch in the light. This feels a little bit 
more matte. Nope, this feels more matte. They're pretty similar. I, I think I'm nitpicking at this point. Um, it does feel thin, but I will say this Andrews McMeal uh, Woodland Wardens has held up decently well. You can see there's a little bit of mild warping in some of my cards. It's not perfect, but it has done okay. But it just doesn't feel like a very sturdy. It's, it's going to feel thinner than what you're expecting, I feel like, for an Oracle card. We are seeing this across the Oracle market right now, and I think it's a reflection of rising uh, printing costs. The manufacturing cost of decks has really changed recently, so um, that's probably why we're seeing that. But anyways, okay, I cannot shut up. We're going to be here forever if I do this for every deck. All right, let's get, let's get into it. So we have Welcome Mystery, um, Spell for Manifestation. It looks like she's got kind of... Um, almost like the smoke is coming. Interesting. It's like there's stuff happening with her ear and also her mouth. That's interesting. Here we have a spell for trust. Oh, I like these themes. Abundance, grounding. I love the roots coming down. Actually, this is kind of, this is kind of growing on me already. Spell for sacred guidance. We'll see what the guidebook says. Oh, I love that there's a self-love spell in here for personal power, courage. Okay. I'm loving these themes. A spell for silence. There's something about this. I was ready to kind of, I mean, no offense. I was ready to kind of be not about it, <laughs> to be honest. The the art style didn't immediately grab me. But the more that I'm looking at these cards, it's hitting me the way that, that Reclaim hit me, where I'm kind of, even though it seems like a fairly b simple kind of rustic style of art, it's drawing me into the card and it's feeling like powerful. Spell for Fate. I love this with the weaving and the the, the spinning happening here. Spell for justice. Spell for surrender. Oh, for an ending. This is really potent for balance. This feels very magical. This feels like a witch made this. Like, you know what I mean? Sometimes they don't feel like that. This feels like that. This feels like a much more um, raw version of magic making and spells. A spell for breaking cycles. That's a powerful one. For awakening. For healing. Okay, I'm really liking this. For drawing down the moon. For joy. Okay, we're just going to go through probably all of them because I have no self-control. So that's what we're going to do. Cosmic Consciousness. If this video is long, I know y'all will, will be into it. So we're good. Spell for Wholeness. Candle for Peace. Oh, candle instead of Spell. Okay, wait, 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 wait. So we have Candles. Okay, so we have Spells. These are just Spells, this pile. Now we have Candles. So I'm going to make a second pile here. So we have Candle for Peace. I should zoom us in a bit. Let's zoom us in. I know we're halfway through, but whatever. Candle for Intuition. Candle for rewards. This feels like a, an abundance type of thing. Candle for vitality. Candle for strength. And it's giving you sort of a visual idea of what you could potentially even incorporate into your spell. Just looking at the card, right? We get the idea of candle colors that'll be good, right? Green candle for reward. Purple for intuition. This, this is exactly how I would do it. Red for strength, yes. A candle for sensuality. I love that. A candle for hope. White candle, yes. Candle for clearing. For compassion, pink, yes. For creativity. Oh. For receptivity, for blessing. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Now, those are the candle cards. So we have a little pile of candle cards. Now we have for we have sigils. So we have sigil for blessing, and there's our sigil kind of there. Our sigils worked into the image here. These are classic. Um, this is one style of sigil making that is very common. Sigil for protection for fertility, for eros, for unbinding, for safe travel, for forgiveness, for ancestral aid, for prosperity, for dream work. Okay, and now we have some tools. So there's definitely suits. So now we have wand, make, cauldron, cultivate, crystal ball, see or scry, um, warp, does that say warp, bind? I'm not sure. Oh, then now these are sort of like parts of the weave, right? Warp and weft. So we have warp for bind and weft for collect. Then we have athame, direct power, chalice for offering, broom for cleanse, mirror reflect, bonfire gather. And then we have a wishing well, moon cycle, sun trust, what came to be, what is unfolding and what will become. So these are the three cards that made, unfortunately, okay, this is kind of a thing. This is a really, really cool 
um, set of cards that are designed to kind of go together and flow together, right? We have what came to be, what is unfolding, and what will become. We have these sort of three aspects, right? Past, present, future, in a way. Um, we can see, well, not in a way, that's clearly what it is. We have the waxing moon, the full moon, the waning moon. We have, uh, or maybe it's the other way around. That might be the other way around. Anyways, the punchline is, this is really clearly a foundation of the theme for this deck, and so that's the cards they chose to put on the back. The unfortunate part of that is visually at first glance, this makes it look like the whole deck is gonna look like that. And these cards don't look distinctly different, and when you put them down, you can actually see the way that they connect, right? You see how the cords connect, which is super cool, but these are the only cards in the deck that look like this. So I think that was kind of an unfortunate choice for the cards on the back because it gives the wrong impression of what you're going to find inside. And if I'd have judged it just by the back of the box, I wouldn't have known how cool this is because this is pretty cool. All right. So we have, um, I don't know how many in each suit. The biggest suit by far is the um, spells. So this is kind of the objects at the end. These are the sigils. These ones are the candles. So just a slight bit of those. And then these are the spells. So you have the most spells and then you have these other things. So let's, and they are numbered cards. 44, 55, 57, 58, 59. Yeah, so 59, is it, I thought there were 60. 57, 58, 59. Is there one that was a zero? Candles, three, two, one. Zero. Welcome, mystery. Okay, so there's 60. Zero to 59. Okay, so I got these mixed up, but that's okay. Let's take a quick look at the guidebook. Okay, yeah, so here you have it sorted by section. So you have spell cards, then you have candle magic cards, sigil cards, and magical tool cards, and then the last three were the weird sister cards, which is so cool. Okay, so we have the one who, the spinner, the weaver, and the one who cuts the cord as those last three, which was really cool. So here we have a grimoire. Let's see what some of these... Wait, okay. Oh yeah, there's a couple of spreads here. And then in the actual cards, what do you get? Spell ingredients. So you get a basic message and then a list of spell ingredients. So for example, for the spell for grounding, it says, thank Mother Earth for providing us with a home, with a moon, with fruits and flowers. Imagine your energy dropping down into the soil below as if you are a plant with gorgeous deep roots. Ask to know the taste of her soil, the beat of her heart, the history of the land. That's really beautiful. Spell ingredients. Speak the native na name of the land which you occupy. Listen to plants. Offer your love to the landscape and be barefoot. So this sounds more like actions, but then some of them are more like ingredients. So like, for example, here is spell for justice. And you get that same information here about boundaries, like it tells you basically how to work with this energy. And then the spell ingredients listed are honeycomb, cedar smoke, berry leaves and brambles, chocolate and yarrow crown. Um, and I would just pick, don't forget with spells, you can just pick one or two ingredients that speak to you and work with that. Here we have the candle colors matched up with the candle spells. The sigils uh, give you a ruling planet. The tools give you uh, information about that tool and then a suggested magic. So for example, for weft, which is collect, the suggested magic is write yourself a list, a letter, a poem about your major trials and accomplishments in your life up to this moment. You have initiated more than you realize. Celebrate your work. Okay, that's really cool. I know I ended up just making an entire video about this deck, but this is really neat. I was, I was kind of expecting to kind of just quickly look at it and be like, this is cool. Okay, let's wait and see how it turns out. But actually, I really like this. I'm tempted actu actually to put it back in order and use it the way that I use the Witchlings deck. This could give Witchlings finally a run for its money because it's got a lot of good themes and it's got a similar format that I really like, <clears throat> but it feels powerful. It feels potent. And I really love the themes of the magical work in here. This is actually, I've said actually like 17 times in this video. I apologize for my repetition, but this is an unexpected delight that I wasn't sure I was going to be excited about. And now I am. So that's pretty neat. All right, let me put away the stuff that we're not actually working with in this video so I don't get confused. Okay, let's talk about the Ehrenberg Tarot. Okay, I'm just going to stay zoomed in because this is clearly a better angle. Uh, this was actually sent to me by my dear friend, Tori. Thank you, Tori. Um, it was difficult to get in Canada. It's a U.S. Games, and I just wasn't seeing it anywhere right away, and I was an impatient girl. So Tori got a copy and sent it to me. Thank you so, so much. Um, I've been really excited about this since I first saw it. I don't often get excited about decks with this more, um, shall we say, serious, more 
more serious tarot vibes. It feels very adult for me. <laughs> I love my decks to have a bit of whimsy and story, but this just feels really neat because it changes the perspective. And if you've been watching my channel for a bit, you know that I am a sucker for a shift in perspective on the tarot. It's actually something that tends to really excite me. Examples of decks that have changed the perspective for me have been like the Tarot of Oneness by Robin Voicey. Um, even the uh, the Wild Unknown, it could just gave us a whole new perspective on the tarot. This, what this does is it zooms in on the characters, the classic characters of the cards. And I think that there is a bit of a mild whimsy or playfulness to this deck. There's sort of almost like a carnival vibe, like in the Wheel of Fortune. Where did that go? Um, yeah, this gives me carnival, carnival vibes. And then of course, this also gives us a bit of that, as does the Magician. There's a little bit of um, playfulness kind of speckled throughout this deck. But what I mostly love is the zoom in. I love how we zoom in on the fool's eyes and his hat and the little bell. We really kind of are zooming in on that energy. Um, I'm not gonna do a full flip through this one, but if you do want me to deep dive through this or um, do a full length video kind of picking apart my thoughts on all of these cards, definitely let me know. As usual, when I film these videos, if you are a viewer of the channel, a regular subscriber, and you want me to make a full video, let me know because I look through those comments and that's how I plan out my content. Now, April is going to be a little light. I'll talk more about that in a bit, but I'm happy to keep note of the ones that you really want to see more from me about and then get back to those and make videos about those. If you're a member, if you're a magical unicorn or a badass unicorn and you want to see one of the decks that I show today in our next member reading video, let me know because that's also really useful. Um, I'm probably going to want to pull this one in <laughs> because, oh, I love this. Okay, I have... I have thoughts for sure. So there's a lot of eyes, there's a lot of close-ups on faces or on hands. Yeah, really, really, really cool. So very, very excited about this one. I love this kind of Argyle back, backing. Is that what you call that, Argyle? Anyways, this is fun. It doesn't feel as, um, it's not that stiff US Games cardstock. It's like that classical, almost playing card style cardstock. It's not linen, it's, you know, but it's got a little bit of snap and it's thin and it's gonna be really lovely to shuffle. I'm gonna keep it in order for now though because I feel like I'm gonna probably be tempted to do a little more with this one, but we'll see, we'll see. So that is the Ehrenberg Tarot. Thank you, Tori. Oh, I'm gonna fumble it. Okay, let's put it over there. Um, next is a deck I purchased. This this came about um, as a result of Don Michelle's What the Fuck is Up With That? <laughs> so we did a group video. It was Don Michelle, me, Danny, Marlena, Krista, and Andy all together in a group. And it was so fun. We're gonna be doing it again this month. But um, during that video, we got talking about this deck because Krista had it and was talking about it. And it is called The Blooming Lovelies. And when you get it, you get um, your choice of a pink or a black bag. So I went with the pink with the narwhal on it because that's literally perfect. Um, so that's where this is going to live. It's a cute little bag, actually. Um, it's it's like kind of got that uh, velvety feeling, but it's not velvet. It's like faux velvet. I don't know. It's nice. Anyway, comes in a tuck box um, with these like extra little goodies tucked into the box. Please praise me like you should, this little kitty cat. Chips are for life, not just for breakfast. <laughs> so adorable. Um, this is a sticker, so I gotta figure out where I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that with my stickers. But this one says, you were always beautiful and I loved you always. I love that. And piercing Nirvana. So it's it's really an interesting deck. It's quirky for sure, but it, and it comes in a quite a thick, this is a very thick um, rose petal finish tuck box. So that's nice. And it says on the back, within this box of whimsical badassery, you will find 53 oracle cards and two guide cards. All the artworks are original hand-painted watercolors by Amber Fossey, a.k.a. Zeppelin Moon. This collection is a wild creature built card by card with giant love. The blooming lovely one is you, made in the UK. Um, love this. So let's take a look at it. This gives me Winnie the Pooh vibes right on top, but it says this pack of Oracle cards is divided into matters of the sky, the earth, the sea, the heart, and the universe. These five suits each contain 10 cards culminating in the grand sum of 50 tiny well wishes, plus a lucky three wild cards. Please peru the, peruse them tempestuously or scatter them freely as your heart desires. There are no rules of interpretation because rules are very silly indeed, according to my cat. <laughs> All my heart, Amber, uh, wild name, Zeppelin Moon. I love that. Um, pick a card, any card, saying the crow who had no voice, wingtips flutter, clack the stack echoes, we shuffle on, paw this one, nudge that with your dewy nose, fix the chosen with a beady eye, clutch it to your chest, dear beast, burrow it deep, in the place you save kisses for rainy days, else toss it to the wolves, or into the fire the man made, 
Watch it dance smoke songs up the walls, for you have choices and a keen heart. These are mere moments in a never-ending story, and you will write your own. I love that so much. It's like a little poem from the creator. So I love that. That's really sweet. And we begin with the narwhal, which just makes me so happy. Um, so this says, the reality is that magic is real. The thing about this deck that captured, I think, all of our hearts when Krista was showing it to us, these are the backs, um, a cat playing with the moon, amazing. Um, but the thing that captured our attention, I think, the most, and I don't want to speak for everybody, but definitely for me, is the, the kind of randomness of it and the fact that within the randomness there is meaning and depth, and I love that. The reality is that magic is real. I freaking love it. Um, dry your eyes, baby. A peaceful world is worth believing in. So again, I don't want to do the whole thing because we've got so many decks to go through, but my hot shit brings all the flies to the yard. I mean, if there was ever a Peggy card <laughs> in this deck, that's it. Um, then we have so sad songs must be sung. Um, the swoopy sky punk wins the chips. I mean, it's, it's glorious rise again, but it's also very powerful. If I could, I would wrap you in flowers. Part of me wants to pair this with the tarot of curious creatures because I just feel like the sass of it would just blend so beautifully. Um, kaleidoscope, the mind fragments, glitter, fall and morph, crack and burst. Every glisten unique amazes. Yeah, but no, but yeah, I love that card. Uh, take the ro the route less traveled. Why wear your sad face when you can wear your banana? <laughs> like, it's just delightful. Um, from stardust to stardust, infinity we trust. You are starborn, solar kissed, and lunar blown. What goes down must come up. Your heart will soar again. And we, the cosmic, tumble down and ramble on to forage for stars, for they taste so sweet. Um, this is really cool and very unique. And I'm excited to work with it. it it's really nice. Uh, good cardstock. This feels sturdier than the Weird Sisters or even arguably the Ehrenberg. Um, it feels like a nice, it's probably like a three, it might be a 330 GSM and this might be like a 310. It's just got a little bit more give or less give rather. You can see there's definitely, this is a thicker card than the, than the US games. It's a really nice sturdy cardstock and it's that got that smooth finish. So, you know, it's going to like shuffle and fan beautifully. So yeah, love that. I'm going to pop this back in its box, but I'm delighted to have this in my collection and it's already got a bag, which makes me happy. So it can get hung right on my wall. That is adorable. So yeah, I went right to Etsy and purchased this. Um, again, I'll have links for everything that I'm showing down below so you can check them out for yourself. Okay, let's talk about a deck that was sent to me. This is Sweet Ass Affirmations 3. Now, funny story about this deck. I have been looking at these on Kickstarter. There's been the one, the first one, the second one, and I have like kind of hovered, sat on the fence. Do I want it? Do I not want them? Is it going to clash with other things in my collection or, or compete rather? Um, but I freaking love the vibes of all of these decks. And this one was sent to me by the creator. And it was exactly the kind of message you would expect from this creator. I don't know how to describe it besides to say that the personality totally comes through. Um, you can tell that this is somebody who like truly believes in affirmations, but also has like a playful vibe and just love it. So these decks do tend to launch on Kickstarter. I'm not 100% sure if this one has already launched or is about to launch. I think it's already launched. I think it's already launched, but I'm not 100% I'm not sure. I will have a link down below for you with all the information you need about Sweet Ass Affirmations 3. But as you can see, it's a series. So there's been two previous to this. Um, this one has a 2023. So this has got to be out already, I would think. Um... Real, uncensored, mind-boosting, great conversation starters, creative gifts, connection builders. It's just, a, it's just a cool deck. Oh, yeah. So here's a note. Let's see if there's anything in the note about launch or anything. Um, nope. Just a super sweet. Okay. Like, look at this. This is what I mean. So I'm just, I don't normally share notes, but this is so cute. Um, Lisa, may all of the abundance in the infinite creative vortex bless you. Allow all the beauty and wonder to move you. Heath, the Rage Create team. Heath and the Rage Create team. Um... That's the vibes I was talking about. <laughs> like, and there's stickers. So these weren't in the box. These were outside the box. Um, I don't know that these come with your deck purchases. I have no idea, but I want to show them because they're so cute. But this is like a rainbow unicorn octopus. Like, it's like they know me. Um, I'm going to set that over there with my stickers. And here's another one. So this one has got the holographic. And this one feels, this one the eyes are open. And this one the eyes are closed. And it feels more matte. So, yeah. I need to take these to work because I've got another one of my pink water bottles at work and it's got sticker space. So I think I might take one of these to work and put it on my water bottle. 
This one's also a sticker, and this is cool. It's like a Metatron's cube that's been partly, it's like somebody standing in front of it. And then on the back, it's like, looks like it could be a tattoo or something that's really cool. And these also, that's also a vinyl sticker. This one with the mushroom and the frogs is vinyl, and so is this yin yang symbol. This is awesome. This is awesome. I love that. And then a big one that says, go the fuck outside. Love that. So those are some really nice high quality stickers. I'm assuming they sell these. I don't, I would assume they don't throw them in. I mean, maybe they do. I like to cover this kind of stuff up because this is usually bonuses for people who back, but there's some free bonus goodies where you can get all the digital cards as desktop and mobile wallpapers. There's a coupon to their store, access to the Power Affirmation car, um, podcast. Um, lots of cool stuff. There's also an audio boost podcast card also included. So you get those with your deck. And then here is the intro card. Ahoy space matey. First of all, here is the rage create team. Heath is the one that I was communicating with, but we also have Jason, Annie, Lindsay, Jan, Joe, and skid is the unisquid Oracle. <laughs> So that's amazing. Um, so there's some information here, but this playful deck specifically celebrates cosmic duality. The yin and the yang. Yin embodies the feminine, dark and passive moon, moon party? Wait, yin embodies the feminine, dark and passive moon party, while yang represents the masculine, light and active sun party. That that works. I love this theming for this deck because that's that's energy that I work with a lot, actually. <coughs> There's some information here about how to expand your powers. It says on the front of each card, there's an affirmation and on the back of each card is a burst of motivation. And it goes into more detail as you can see, but that's the premise. And then this is what these decks are like. And I freaking, I freaking love this. Now, if you have been looking at, it's a totally different vibe, but if you've been looking at the um, Buddhism cards, not the Buddhism, the, what are they called? The little Buddha, oh shoot, what's it called now? Hold on. This actually, maybe it's just the shape, but this reminds me a little bit of this deck, which is Buddha Doodles by Molecules. Um, although these cards are much bigger, um, as you can see. But these cards have just these little sweet messages. I love this deck. Um, I don't pull it a lot, but it's, it's more like pulling out. I like to pull these out and place them out somewhere where I can see them. Um, they're just, they're just darling. I love them so much. But anyways, this has got more of like a, a kind of huggy, sweet vibe the Buddha doodles cards but how perfect can we just compliment like just look at this look at this match look at this tree and it has all these little symbols and look at this bag. it's just perfect anyways okay I gotta put that away I keep pulling out other stuff and we're gonna be here forever okay so um let's take a look there is a little bit of a bump on the cards like along the sides it's almost like they were attached together like perforated that that bugs me a little tiny bit it's just a tiny thing I could probably just take an emery board and just very gently file that down on each side and I might do that because it's such a silly thing to be concerned about but listen I'm a tactile girl but anyways the cardstock feels really good actually it's very like sturdy and thick this is probably a 350 GSM um really good anyway I am of love I am in love I am love I love love and then on the back it talks about how love is the antidote, antidote to fear. Love is present at the center of your being. Kind of goes away from there. Wait, wait, let me just read it because this is cute. Um, feeling better always starts with choosing love. What you give is what you get. Tell the truth. Love yourself. Love everyone else and tell some of them. <laughs> Remove expectations. Respect and service nature. Surrender and let go of all you know. Share your light. Honor your curiosity. Ride the momentum. Throw away your television and undies. Meet your muse. Create the world around you. For what is coming is in your mind. You are love. You are in love. You are love. You love. Love. Cute. I am zippy, festive, and full of play. I grow younger every day. These all feel like um, the young cards so far. I grow farmlands of authentic dreams and water them with self-confident streams. There is definitely a groovy vibe to these. Oh, I am an omnipresent treasure. My kick-ass magic is beyond measure. How cute is that? Oh my God, I love that. That's so fun. Okay, obviously it's a unicorn, so I'm biased. Uh, so that feels all very young. This one would be more yin. Through the chills and thrills, I joyfully ride. I honor my monsters. I shall not hide. Oh, maybe, maybe yeah. are the black ones meant to be more... It must be, right? Yeah, it must be. Um, <clears throat> my immune system is badass and I ravage all asshat illnesses. Cool. I'm the gateway between God and earth. I invoke the muse and spice up the world. There we go. So it's really fun. Oh, there's that uh, Una octopus thing. I silence, in silence, I hear it all. In stillness, I feel it all. 
there's a lot of woo in this, but it's fun, playful woo. Yeah, this is really cool. I cut all cords of life and death. I'm a vortex of rising vibrations. <laughs> oh my God, wait. Whenever I feel lost in the nights, in the night, I flip on my disco life, lights and dance through the fuckery. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely swears uh, throughout this deck. I rip off my armor and feel the feels. I can love this too. Oh, so good. Okay. I forgive myself and release all pain. My kick-ass inner child will not be restrained. The world conspires for my highest good. Look at this sloth. Um, I am the cosmos that I shape. The world abounds with the good I create. Releasing guilt. I lean into my wild hairs and dismantle the fears that keep me small. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So if you love this kind of thing, if you love like an affirmation deck, something you can set out, like aff affirmation cards, I do think these these kinds of things also make wonderful gifts. You can take something like this and like break it up and tuck one into packages when you send them out, that kind of thing. That's a fun way to use decks like this. These are also really great decks. Same with the Blooming Lovelies actually, but this one I think is more um, instantly understandable by people. Um, and I feel like this would be a really cool one to like just like leave in random places which I think it even, they even mentioned at some point, like that you could scatter them or work with them directly. Very, very cute. Love that. So that's Sweet Ass Affirmations 3. And thank you to the creators for sending that my way so I could share it with all of you. Okay, let's look at a Kickstarter that I have been waiting for for forever and it finally arrived. Um, the Ego Observer Oracle Tarot deck. Um, this is by, is it Zach? Where's the creator? Zachary Lee. So Zachary Lee is the creator. I have to say this campaign was very frustrating for me. It's really difficult as a backer when creators don't communicate. And that is one thing that really I think Zach struggled with throughout this campaign or the post the post campaign time period is just really being present with the backers in comments or in updates. It just was really hit or miss. And it, I think left a lot of people feeling frustrated. There was a lot of delays. There was a lot of like just odd things and it just didn't feel super great as a backer if I'm being completely honest. But I have to say, with all of that said, having the deck in my hands, I am quite pleased with it. Uh, it is exactly what it said it was going to be. There was no shift in the quality from the original. Everything came about as I expected. Uh, and the deck has a really cool, again, perspective. Uh, see previous rambles about how I love decks that change perspective. This one is very, very hardcore geared towards self-awareness work, towards personal growth work. It is really the kind of deck that I feel like is, first of all, designed to help you dig into yourself. And then of course you can use this as well for others. I find this kind of thing appealing because it reminds me a lot of the way that I worked with my Osho Zen Tarot for so, so many years. And it gives me a lot of those similar vibes. So if you enjoy decks like the Osho Zen Tarot and the way that the guidebook is written and the kind of themes, you might really enjoy this. I would say this is kind of like psycho-spiritual in the sense that it leans into the sort of personal psychology of yourself at least from what I've seen at first glances. Um, but there was no real major surprises. There's some little production things I noticed, like it doesn't really quite fully occupy its box. Um, it sort of slides around a bit. There's also a slight, it's very slight, but there's a slight height difference between what's inside the box. I don't know if the camera will pick it up. Yeah, you can kind of see the, the pages of the guidebook right here. It sticks up just a touch. It's not a big deal because it's a magnetic wrap and it still stays closed. Well, I shouldn't, I shouldn't test magnets like that. It still stays closed. Like if you pull it off your shelf, it's going to be fine. You're not going to probably even really notice. I just noticed because I'm paying attention to these things right now for my own reasons. But, um, it is something that I did, I did recognize when I pulled it out is that there's a little bit of a smush for the book. Like I feel like it's kind of being pushed in there again, not a huge deal. And there's some wiggle room around the cards, but I have to say, even though this would have rattled around in shipping, there was no signs of damage to the cards. So I think it's not enough room to be an issue but obviously it's preferable when it fits more um, precisely. So that's something I noticed, but not the end of the world. The guidebook though, this was a huge disappointment because the book appears like it's going to be really, really good. It is incredibly difficult to read um, because it is black pages with white text, but you might not even be able to see it on camera. The headings are in a dark color. Like I cannot, okay, this one says, I think it says celebration up here. The camera might pick it up better than my eyeballs do, but it's really, it's almost impossible to read that. And unfortunately you do see that um, come through on the cards as well, that um, dark color. The red is fine, but these blues and greens, the yellows, okay, I can read that. 
Um, I do think that if you struggle with your vision at all, this guidebook is going to be difficult. I don't know if there is a digital companion guidebook. If there is, I hope that it is on light background. Um, but that is one reason why it's really important, I think, to do light pages or white pages with black text or very, very dark text if it's going to be colored because that just, it does make it difficult. I feel like I get a little bit of eye fatigue and the, the font isn't even all that small, but I get a little eye fatigue looking at the guidebook. So that was a bummer, but the content of the guidebook appears to be pretty good. So the content is good. It's just difficult to read. Okay. The, the, the piece, the piece that we're really interested in here, I think is the, um, is the cards and look at this vibrant blue shiny gilding. Okay, it's pretty. I've got to say, it's a very, very striking deck and these gold foil details on the back of the cards. There's a lot about this deck that can feel very luxurious in that way. It's a really nice matte coated cardstock that has a little tiny bit of reflect, which tells you that there's going to be a little bit of slip and slide. It's going to be nice. It's not going to clump up. Um, and the cards are not, I'm just going to grab the Okash and Thorn, not, excuse me, not the Okash and Thorn, the Heartwood proto card, prototype card here. So you can see they're, they're, they're like Oracle size cards, right? They're quite a bit wider and just a little taller than, um, tarot. So you're going to see quite a difference there. So it is kind of a chunky deck. Here's what's cool. So all of the cards, every single one has been renamed. Um, and I love that energy. The court cards are numbered instead of being titled. So when you get to the court cards, um, for example, once you get past 10, so you have the 10 of the suit, right? You have an 11 instead of, it does say that it's a page, but you have an 11 for the page, a 12 for the knight, a 13 for the queen, and a 14 for the king. I like that. I love how sharp and white the main titles and the numbers are. That definitely, those are really, really easy to read. The struggle comes in just like in the guidebook when you have the dark purple or the dark blue or dark green text at the bottom, because what, he, what he's done here is retitled the cards and the artwork is really designed to evoke the idea of the the keyword here and then underneath that you do have the traditional tarot title but depending on which suit you're in will depend how easy it is to read so here we have the fool and it's in that all the majors have that dark purple text the wands have red text for the card title um, swords have this dark blue at the bottom I don't know if my camera will focus there we go um, and then and I'm in a fairly well lit space and then there's this dark green for the cups and then the gold color for the coins. The gold color for the coins is very readable. The red for the wands I think is very readable. It's the darker purple, blue, and green that are a struggle. Um, so yeah, that's just, a, I think, an unfortunate design choice. But otherwise, <laughs> I feel like I'm ripping on this deck. I swear I'm not. I just, I'm aware of all of these things. I'm hyper aware in probably an obnoxious way right now because I'm in my own creation phase. But anyway, let's talk about it. So I love these keywords. When I first fell in love with this deck on the Kickstarter, it was because I really, really loved the way the keywords were matched with the cards. I love self-discovery for the fool and ego for the magician and intuition for the high priestess. But I also really love, let's skip some cards. I also really love um, the way that the art captures that, that phrase or that keyword. Confidence for the star and cycles for the moon, I think is really powerful play for the sun. This is one that I would like to dive deeper into in probably a full video at some point. Um, growth for the nine of wands. Some of them take a very different, a very different take, but I really found that I could understand and relate to most of these cards. The one sticking spot I had, so self-sacrifice for the seven of swords. I think that's very interesting. Look at that. It's very powerful, but um, let's see. There was one sticking point in the wands where I really disagree. Um, I can make it work, but I do disagree. Where is it? It's in the two and three. Yeah, it's in the two and three of wands, I think. Um, for me, the two of wands is not a card of commitment. For me, the two of wands is the sort of consideration phase, the possibilities phase, the planning phase. It's the phase when we consider what is possible. So I really struggle with this keyword choice. And then the three of wands is when we do commit to a path. We do take steps forward. We do decide which direction we're going to go. And then we start putting th those things into motion. But here he has fantasy for the three of wands, which I, I have a really rough time with this one because this doesn't feel like the energy of this card to me at all. Now, that being said, Zach is very clear that this is an oracle tarot deck. He's not trying to be a traditional tarot with this, right? Most of the other keywords work very, very, very well for the way that I view the tarot. There's just a couple, like I said, that just don't quite hit right. And those are the only ones I remember really thinking, I don't like those, the two and the three of wands. Everything else, um, I can really, really get behind. In fact, let's take a look at the nine of cups. 
attraction. This is cool because to me, this feels like the law of attraction. It feels like drawing towards yourself that, that which you most desire. And I feel like there's places you can take that, which is really cool. Um, I love belonging for the 10 of cups and I can be very picky about keywords, very picky, but I really like, I would say 98% of the, of the, of, well, I guess what is two out of 70? I don't know. Listen, I really like it. <laughs> I do really like it. I was frustrated with the campaign, but I do really like it. I'm glad it's finally in my hands and I am going to really enjoy getting to know it and working with it. This is not one of those decks. I don't think where I am so frustrated by the way the campaign is handled that like it's ruined the deck for me. I don't think I'm in that situation at all. Um, but I am, I am hoping that I can get comfortable with the, with the book because there is good stuff in here. What I really like is that every single card has a self-awareness practice so that if you want to use this for self-reflection, for personal growth, um, you can refer to that self-awareness practice located at the bottom of every card entry and just work with that, right? There is some spreads in here that are actually super cool. I don't want to spoil them for you, um, but there's some spreads here around triggered beliefs. There's uh, a self-sabotage spread. So there's some really cool stuff um, for self-reflection in here. And that is what really drew me to this deck originally. And it's what's going to have me, I think, really enjoy taking time to get to know it and work with it. I am going to try to take it at face value. In other words, in this way, I feel like having these traditional tarot associations be a little difficult to read is probably going to be good good for me because then I can really focus on the main phrase or the main keyword and not try to pigeonhole it into just or to box it into tarot. If I see this and see fantasy and don't think of it as the three of wands, there's good stuff for me to get from that in a reading. So I think I just need to sort of dis disentangle it from the way that I typically view the tarot in most cases and just allow it to be what it's going to be in a reading. And I think I'll get really good value out of it in that way. I think I'll get really substantial in-depth readings that I can sit with and learn from. So I'm excited about that for sure. So that is the Ego Observer Tarot by uh, Zachary Lee. And I believe um, the pre-orders for this deck are now open. I think you can now buy it, but I'm not sure. I think backers may still be receiving. Like, I don't know where it's at in the, in the fulfillment process, but I will definitely have it linked down below so you can check it out if this is up your alley. Okay, let's talk about the deck that made me cry. <laughs> um, <sighs> the Sylvan Kind Oracle. I... Like, uh, this is such an incredible, this is such an incredible deck. So this is actually created by Greg White. Now, Greg White was the creator of a previous deck that I cannot remember the name of that I gushed and gushed and followed while it was going happening on Instagram, but never did buy. Um, it was the deck that had white backgrounds and had animal shaped cutouts. And then inside those animal shaped cutouts were beautiful nature scenes. And it's, it's absolutely stunning. Greg White is based in Canada and, and his artwork is absolutely breathtaking. It's really, really beautiful. I didn't get, end up getting that deck because Animal Decks and me have, we, we're we challenged occasionally, even though I have lots of them. I am sometimes challenged with animal-based decks, so I decided not to get that tarot. But then he came out with the Sylvan Kind Oracle. Now, I don't know what trip I was on when this actually hit Kickstarter because I remember really loving it on Kickstarter and for whatever reason I didn't back it and I don't know why <laughs> but I was reminded of it sometime recently and I purchased it. It came very quickly. It was beautifully packaged. Um... And I absolutely fell in love. And I literally opened this deck while I was just sitting at my desk and flipped through the first few cards. And literally this thing made me cry. Like not like, oh, I've got a little tear, like full on cry. It just is so emotive. It's so powerful. And it's it's really beautiful. So I'm gushing without showing you. But anyways, um, I did get the full companion guidebook for it. I think you can get just the cards and then get this separately or you can get this. But oh my gosh. First of all, there's little stickers, which I now get to put, put in my growing sticker pile. Um, this deck is very much a deck about nature and conservancy. Conser conser is that the right? Conservation? There we go. It's about nature and conservation and about connection to land. And it's about tree spirits. But it's, it's more than that. It's also very human in so many ways. So there's a couple of prints that came in here. One of them had a note on it. So I'll put those in my little goodie pile. And look at this bookmark. Is this not beautiful with this really nice little braided tassel and this gorgeous card image that is two-sided? Love that. That's actually really nice, especially because the book for this is so lovely. We're going to get into that shortly. Okay, let's talk about the cards. So they come in a really nice magnetic box. It's very simple. This is a box design. I love how clean the inside is. Again, I'm in production mode right now. So, and I'm actually just getting ready to do box design work at the time I'm filming this. Um, 
So I'm really just noticing what I'm drawn to, what I'm attracted to, what I like. And I definitely like when we have these clean interiors with um, either the box lid or the open up magnet flap where it's, you know, just nice, has a quote or a little phrase. I love that. I love that vibe. It's simple. It's clean. Anyways, okay, I'm gonna shut up. Let's look at these cards. Y'all, I'm so annoying today. Okay. So this deck is organized into suits, right? We have the red, the orange, the yellow, green, blue, purple, and these lighter purple. And then we have these brown cards in the back. And those are intentional, I believe. Let's just double check what the suits are named. I know I said I was going to get in the guidebook later. I don't know why I lie to you. I lie to you all the time in videos. I don't know why you listen to me. Okay, so, okay, red is fruit, emotions and relationships. Orange is blooms, career and creativity. Yellow is seeds, wealth and finance. Green is leaves, thinking and mental states. Blue is branches, methods of communication. Indigo is bark, home and environment. Violet is roots, spirit and interconnection. And brown is trunks, physical body and aging. So those are the suits. And I'll show you the card that made me cry because it just was, it happened right away. But these cards, they're so, I feel like you're so connected to a feeling when you look at this artwork. Um, it's really beautiful. And there's a ton of cards, by the way. How many cards? Uh, does it say in the book? Hold on. I want to tell you because I think there's quite a few. Actually, they're numbered. So let's just go to the, oh no, they're not numbered. They're Pursuit. There is eight Pursuit and there are eight suits, I think. I think there's 64 cards. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, there's 64, there's 64 cards. It says right there, 64 cards. So there's a lot. <clears throat> oh, and there's the backings I forgot to show you. And the card stock is that classic, um, feels like a really nice like playing card style, a little bit shiny, like the classic tarot card stock. And this is classic tarot card size, which we love. So here we go. We have passion, family, manipulation. Oh, that's the other thing. This deck has very balanced keywords and it makes me so happy. I've at the point, at the time that I'm filming this, I've actually done, been doing, I just spent like months doing keyword work for my, um, another deck that I'm working on. And it was really important for me to like have balance. So I had this whole system where like I had X number of positive, X number of neutral and X number of difficult or challenging like keywords per suit. Um, and I can feel that same kind of care in the keyword selection for this deck where it's clear that there is cards that are meant to be more uplifting and ones that are meant to be more challenging. But look at this. You can get age diversity in a tree, in a tree spirit deck. Amazing. This one really got me in the feels. There's something so beautiful about this that I just could not. And this next card is the one that made me cry. Um, I just found this such a powerful emotive depiction of what loss is like, but also how we can find that sense of continuing forward with connection. It was, it just, it really hits me right as a gut punch. So, so powerful, but it's not the only card that made me feel those intense things. It's just one of them. And it, it really stood out to me how quickly I started feeling this really strong emotional bond to this deck. And if you take it at face value, just working with this gorgeous artwork and what, how they're depicted and these keywords, you'll have a really powerful experience with this deck, I think. So I'm going to start to skip cards, but let me know if you want a full walkthrough because I feel like this is one that just has a lot of substance. Oh, um, but like I said, you can take it at face value and sort of work with these cards and these keywords and this art, right? But then you can also work with the guidebook and you get a lot of really, really strong environmental uh, messages, right? Conserv cons conservation messages, messages about like, you know, harmonizing with the land. And it's just, it's so beautiful. So let's take a look at the guidebook. <clears throat> so this is like the closest thing to, if I'm going to have a separate guidebook for a deck like this, like the way this is formatted hits all of my happy places. We have our color coded page edges, which y'all know I used to do this by hand with markers in all of my tarot decks. Like this just makes me really happy. Um, so you can easily find what cards you're looking for because each card is numbered one through eight within each suit. So if you've got a blue card, you can go to the blue or indigo rather. If you've got a green card, you can go to green really, really easily. Um, so we have full size artwork on the left, just like a Llewellyn guidebook, which I think is just awesome. And then you have a full page where you get the main keyword and then you get a few follow-up keywords. And this is again, where I had a whole moment because again, I've just finished all of my keyword work on a deck that I'm working on. And I did this kind of concept where I have a main keyword and then three sub keywords. And I see that here and I'm like, oh my God, like we're on the same wavelength, that's amazing. So um, this also has a featured tree in every card. 
and that goes all the way through. So this is a tree-based deck. You get a bunch of information about the artwork kind of starting in the beginning. Then you get information about sort of what is the vibe, what is the energy or the message of this card. And then here it's really specific, right? The third paragraph is really specific. You know, when this card appears, well, maybe it's the second paragraph, but you get information about what this card means if it comes up in a reading. And then you also get some information. This is, this is also very geared towards like personal growth, self-reflection. For example, here's priorities. And it says here at the bottom, having money can ensure that our basic needs are met, but we must take care not to allow an unrelenting pursuit of it to dominate our lives. The laburnum, also known as the golden chain tree, invites us to contemplate on how we are held captive by the promise of shiny things. I love that. But there's some really, really good, 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 good messages in here. So I, this is such a profound deck. I think it's really special. And not a lot of deck hits me like that with a gut punch to the heart. And this one definitely did. So the Sylvan Kind Oracle is, I think, really, really stunning. If you've been looking for a deck to dive into tree energy or nature energy or conserve and con why do I keep wanting to say conservancy? Is that a real word? Is my brain just broken? Uh, if you want one based around nature cons conservation or around connection to the planet or the world, the, the world around you, this is, I think, a really beautiful one to explore. And it's not just light and fluffy, which is really special. Okay, let's talk next about a deck that was sent to me for sharing with you guys. This is the Baroque Tarot First Edition. I will have a link to this down below. There's been a couple of decks with a similar name. This one is by Spectrum Projects LLC. I forget, is there a creator name in here? I was totally corresponding with this creator, but I don't remember if they gave a name now. Ah, Mustafa, there we go. Now I remember Mustafa is the creator. Um, Let's look at this because this is really beautiful. Again, see my previous commentary about <clears throat> decks that have a more serious feel, but this is absolutely so lovely to look at. I adore it. So um, I don't know the future, the long-term future of this deck because it is so serious. And every time I have a deck like this, I fall in love with it and then I, I don't end up reaching for it, but it is so gorgeous. It's very dark. It's very rich. Here's what the backings look like. I've got my fingerprints all over it but there's the backing um with this gorgeous zodiacal wheel these moon cycles it's all in gold foiling and the fronts also have gold foiling and the cardstock feels really nice it's got some really good snap to it and the gilding also feels like it's a really high quality it doesn't feel like that um I've just touched gilding that feels cheap. I don't know how to describe it. This doesn't feel like that, so that's good. Um, but it's very dark because Baroque art is, as I understand it, very dark. But it's very um, Rider Waite Smith. Like all of the necessary imagery or the important imagery is present on the cards. It's very, very well done. Let's bring it up a little bit higher. I guess I could bring the camera closer, but too lazy for that. I love this strength card. This is stunning. I don't know. Look at this judgment card. Oh. Okay, I don't know how, because it's just, it's just honestly so pretty. <laughs> it's so pretty. There's our coin suit. Swords. It feels very, like I said, very um, elegant. This is a very elegant deck. And I'm sure, I, I, I don't know a lot about how it was created, but gosh, it just really seems to fit so well with the meaning of each card. Always a dude with wine, though. That's the Rider Waite Smith, though, for you. I love that Ten of Cups. It's actually kind of ironic. We often see this, and even in very dark decks, the Ten of Cups is always so bright, which is kind of fun. There's the sun. Love that energy. The two and the three of wands are ones that I often look at. Um, the eight of wands. The knight of wands. Ooh, let's take a, let's look at the hermit. Did we see the hermit yet? Ah, there's the hermit. Such a mood. It's so rich and dark. This would be, this would look absolutely breathtaking by candlelight. Like this is a very aesthetic, aesthetic deck. Look at the six of swords. Again, it's very dark. That is the nature of the, the style of art that it's trying to depict but it's poignant. Like, look at this five of cups, right? There's not a lot visually, but what you can see really hits you, you know? Gorgeous. It's just gorgeous. Let's look at the page of cups. There she is. Really, really cool. So check that out. Like I said, I'll have a link to it down below. This is the first edition. I believe this creator either has another deck that's come out since then. 
I remember he asked me about a couple of his decks, and this is the one that caught my eye that I was like, yeah, this looks really, really beautiful. I'd love to show this. Um, but there's another one as well that I think maybe was just less my style. But I will link this one down below so you can check out all of the goodies by this creator. And finally, let's talk about the thing I'm probably, out of all of this, not probably, definitely, the most excited about, because I can't help myself, and it is the Tarot of Echoes by Anna Turian. I apologize because I'm pretty sure you cannot get this right now. This was a limited independent uh, creation print run um, because this deck is going mass market. This version of it, the ind independent version, does not come with a guidebook. What you see is what you get. You get the cards, you get it in this beautiful box, um, but you get it right now. And I am an impatient girl and I don't want to wait for this to come out mass market because I have been waiting for this deck for so, so long. Anna has been working on this for years. I remember her posting about this long before the Abyss Tarot came out, which has now been out for a while. She has been working on this deck for a long time, but Anna is a busy artist. We all love her art. And so she gets she gets herself quite busy. It's in my favorite kind of a box though. Like this is my favorite kind of box. I love it. And these aren't the cheapest boxes to produce. So very, very exciting. Um, really nice classic card stock. I have and adore the Oracle of Echoes. Oh, she did sign the inside of the boxes of the independent print run, which makes me very, very happy. Um, Freaking so excited about this. I definitely wanna do a deep dive of this deck. I have not, filmed it yet, but if you want to see it and if that's a good one, please let me know down below because that helps me prioritize what I'm going to film first. Let me just pull out my Oracle of Echoes. I had the first edition of the Oracle of Echoes, but when Anna came out with the second edition, I scooped that one up and I let my first edition go because the first, um, because the second edition had more cards. Um, this gets a lot of use, you can tell, because I've bowed the crap out of mine. Um, but this is nice card stock. This is like classic, like if you know, like make playing cards, really good, high quality card stock, that's what this is. Um, feels really nice to hold. And those are what the backings look like together of the second edition uh, Oracle of Echoes and the Tarot of Echoes. But the Oracle of Echoes just has this very I don't know. I wish I could describe it, but I freaking love this deck so much. It's it's one of my longtime favorite all-arounders, but I'm going to have to shuffle it the other way just to like let it come back to life because the poor thing just has been getting bowed over time because I always like to bridge my decks and I tend to spend a long time on my bridge and that definitely gets them bowed or I'm too aggressive with my first part of my shuffle. Anyway, okay, this is not what this video is about. Let me show the actual deck. This is stunning. Every single card is, is I was gonna say a work of art. Obviously every single card is a work of art that was actually painted, um, but every card is breathtaking. Just captivating, magical. Um, Anna's work is really special and I'm a huge fan. I love this Eight of Cups. This captures a lot of the vibe of when, what do you do when the grass actually is greener on the other side? What, what is your next move, right? Because this shows what, you know, what, where you were and where you're going really powerfully. Love the Page of Cups. Let's look at the two and three of wands. There's the two and there's the three. These cards really need to be distinctive, I think. Powerful Ten of Wands. Look at that Queen of Wands. Oh my God. Let's take a look at the cups because I want to see... I know I would have checked this already, but I want to see um, my favorite cards. The Nine of Cups. Oh, I love this. I love this. It's, I'm acting like I'm seeing it for the first time. I totally flipped through every single card the moment I had this in my hands, but I just, it's been a little bit. I've had this tucked away waiting for this video. I love this King of Cups too. Oh my God, it's so good. It's so, 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 so good. Let's look at, okay, let's look at one more. We'll look at the Three of Swords. That's another one I, I like to look at. Yep. We still have the heart being stabbed by the three swords in the reflection of the water, but that's not the focal point of the card. Love that. Oh, it's so good. I'm so excited about this. So yeah, I definitely want to spend some time getting to know this one in a lot more detail, but I could not be more pleased to have it. I'm so glad I didn't wait for the mass market, but if you missed it, don't fret because it is coming out. It will come with a guidebook, which will be great. Um, and it'll be more affordable naturally. So keep an eye out for the mass market of that. And, um, yeah. Also, just as a heads up, if you have not checked with, um, 
If you haven't checked in on Anna's Instagram account, Anna Turian's Instagram account, go follow her because she was collecting responses to find out if people would be interested in an English version, an English language version of the Arthurian tarot, which a lot of us have been ordering from France. <laughs> um, and I'd love to see that happen. I would love to see that deck come out in an English speaking, in an English language, because I worked with the guidebook using Google, Google Translate. And it's fine, but it's definitely flawed. <laughs> so I would love, love, love to have it in English, have the card titles in English. I would rebuy it in a second. So uh, if you also would be interested in that, make sure that you let Anna know. And finally, hey, did you know? Did you know I created a tarot deck and it is going to be launching on Kickstarter on April 20th? That isn't just a couple of weeks, y'all. This is happening. I cannot wait. Um, if you have been following the journey of this deck, thank you so, so much. If you've already clicked notify me on the Kickstarter page, thank you so, so much. It's so great to see people excited for the launch. But um, in case you've somehow missed it, you've been under a rock, you've just found my channel for the first time. Hi, I created a tarot deck. It's called the Unicorn's Journey Tarot and I am so excited. And yes, I am going to be mentioning it a lot this month um, and forever and ever and ever and ever because this is a piece of my heart and soul and I love it so much. Um, it is a story of self-worth, of self-discovery, of recognizing your value, of found family and un like sort of tapping into your potential and recognizing what you can do, right? Really unlocking your destiny. And I am so passionate about this deck and so excited that the Kickstarter is coming and I can have it in your hands because it has been in mine for quite a while and I just cannot wait. It's going to be on a luxurious 330 GSM black cork card stock. Yes, this sounds like a commercial and I don't freaking care because I'm excited. <laughs> Anyways, I am really, 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 really stoked about it. Um, and I've got some stretch goals planned for the campaign, and I haven't talked about that a lot, but I want to talk about it now. Some stretch goals, some things that I would love to make happen for this deck, but I can only make that happen if I get enough backers, and that is I'd love to have uh, a stretch goal so we can get some beautiful matching colored card edges to match these gorgeous backs. Um, I would love to get holographic detailing for the star so that it's actually a silver holographic rainbow star with little flecks of rainbow stars around it. I would love, love, love that. Um, I would love love to be able to finally, finally show you the two secret cards that I worked on and created. These are a stretch goal. If we hit the stretch goal, I can produce the deck with these two special, special bonus cards that I have yet to reveal to anybody but my very closest friends. So I um, have been keeping a secret and secrets are hard for me and I really wanna show you these cards, but I cannot until we meet that stretch goal. So that 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 that, that really needs to happen, okay? That really needs to happen. Um, what kind of box the deck will have will matter, right? We are going to be launching the deck. Um, at minimum, I will be able to produce a nice two-piece hard box like this one. Um, but if we meet the stretch goal, I can produce a box like this one with the really nice open magnetic flap. I love these boxes. I don't have to keep track of two parts. It keeps everything really nice and secure. I love the magnets. I like, I love this. I want this, but we have to hit a stretch goal for that. Um, there are other surprises I am also working on in stretch goals. If we can get through the first few that can really up the production quality of the deck, then I will start to roll out a couple of other surprises uh, if I can, but this campaign is everything to me and I appreciate all of your support in advance. I cannot wait. Like my heart beats so fast every time I even think of somebody else. Not even my closest friends have held a copy of this deck in their hands yet. This is just my, my test print. Um, this is the deck I'll use for the photos for the Kickstarter campaign um, or for the video, you know, but I, I need this. I need to see this in other people's hands. And it's been so long. I've been working on this deck for going on, we're, gosh, we're like a year and a half now. And, um, it's a whole world to me. These characters all live, breathe, eat, sleep in my mind. And I want them to be out there in the world making people happy. So anyways, really excited about it. I will shut up now. I'll stop gushing for this video, but um, it's going to continue to feature in, <laughs> in other videos because I need to remember, I need to, I need to share my excitement with all of you. I even made my nail polish match. See, see. Anyways, all right, enough about that. Thank you so, so much for hanging out with me for my recent deck roundup. I'll be doing another one of these in May, so keep your eyes peeled. I am really excited about some things that are gonna be featuring in that video. So keep your, I just said keep your eyes out, but like, you know, keep, keep your eyes out. And I will be talking to you lots throughout this month, but I may not have as many of my regularly scheduled videos as usual as I'm prepping for the Kickstarter launch. So please be patient with me, but you are going to see some more pieces of my collection at a minimum. I'll be on some live streams. There will be content. It's just going to be a little different in April, but thank you for sticking with me and I will see you in the next one. Until then, may your magic always shine from the inside out. So much love to all of you. Bye.